Welcome to Centre Church. We hope you enjoyed this message, recorded live from our Burgess Hill campus. Wow, it's a truly um, a honor for me to be here today. Uh, it's incredible how life goes sometimes, you know, you, uh, you start working with God and uh, no matter how wild is your imagination, you never kind of figure out where God will bring you. And I, I was now sitting here and uh, I was thinking that oh, I'm about to speak in an opening day at the IBTI or IBTC, how is it called now? So it's something is massive for me uh, because it means so much, uh, the college. Uh, but then it brought my man, mind back when I actually arrived in the UK. You know, I was like 2007, I couldn't speak a word of English. Uh, literally, I couldn't speak a word. So. Uh, my, my sister, she was a bit better than me, or she was good in English, so she, she wrote me a few sentences on a piece of paper. So when you go to the train station, you need to buy the train ticket from the airport, you know, to, to Burgess Hill. So of course, Burgess Hill was Burgess Hill for me because I was Italian. <laughs> we don't tell the age, Burgess Hill, you know, like. So I went there at the train station with my little piece of paper trying to explain myself. Another important word that I knew was coffee because of course for Italian, uh, for an Italian, you know, coffee is something important. So I said, I'm gonna go for a coffee because I had to wait some, I had some time to wait at the airport. So I went to Costa. Um, so in, in Italy, you go for a coffee, can I have a coffee? And a coffee comes in a tiny cup, a nice espresso, and that's what coffee is. But, you know, I thought that must be something easy. I just ask coffee, uh, and I will figure out something. But actually, I was panicked, because the lady who was in the till replied to me, she said, regular or large? And I was like, regular or large? What does it even mean? You know, we, okay, I said, well, regular. And then she presented me with these, you know, these buckets, you know, the typical <laughs> <laughs> from, from Costa. And I was, goodness me, they want to kill me here because for me, coffee is something very strong. And if you drink uh, like a massive mug of espresso, you end up pretty sure, you know, you end up at the hospital. So I, I thought, okay, that's a good welcoming. Someone wants to kill me. And then I, I tried to, I, I started to drink it. I was like, okay, he's actually, you know, he's not so strong as I, I thought. And then from there, you know, it's not God has done wonderful things in my life. And I, I came uh, at the IBTI and um, it was an English course for the first few months and uh, one month before. And I remember it was very, very difficult for me. And, uh, but God had a plan for my life. And this is always, you know, what actually whenever I feel a bit in panic because something maybe is not actually going the way how I'm thinking it should go or imagine that it should be going, you know, I always remember God as a purpose for my life. God has a plan, and sometimes it's very difficult to figure out what that plan is. So I started to study the college. I met Anna, uh, who is now my wife there. Uh, she was coming from Germany. You know, I was coming from Italy. We met there. We done two years course. We got married. God has given us two wonderful uh, kids, um, and we are still here in this country. And now we are looking after a church in uh, Suffolk, Norfolk, Suffolk. Is we're actually right on the edge between the two counties. Um, different accent. And now I actually, I, I came in this country, I couldn't speak English. Now I start even to, to pay attention to the different accents that within the UK. So it's like, when I came here, it's like, okay, this is a different accent. I need to tune up my, you know, my brain to understand what they're saying to me. Because there they speak something, you know, not English, but with a very different accent. <laughs> so it's, it was, yeah, very good. So it's very good for me to be here. It is an a honor for me. Uh, to be here, and um, I hope that you know what I'm going to share this morning will be uh, a great um, uh, help for you in the church, but as well for you students uh, for this uh, year, academic year that is waiting uh, for you. Uh, you know, is when I was asked to uh, to speak at the opening day of the IBTC, like because usually you know we st I remember we used to start in September. It was like. No, actually, we are starting, they are starting in January, that's the beginning of the year. So it's like, actually, you know, there is something that we can speak there, because whenever, you know, we, the beginning of the year comes, you know, we, uh, we Christians, we like to focus ourselves, you know, uh, on God. And I'm happy that, you know, Lisa kind of, she already mentioned some of the things that uh, I want to say this morning, that, you know, that the college is there for you students to help you focusing on God and the plan that God has for your life. But really, for all of us Christians, whenever 
uh, the months of January come, you know, we look ahead and we say, okay, I want to focus myself. And maybe there are different things in our life that are important to us. We are speaking exactly about these uh, same things also in the church, you know, in these months of January, the importance of focusing o- on God. So we look at the year ahead, and maybe you are thinking, I want to do better with, with my wife, with my husband, with my children, with my uh, work colleagues. You know, we've got different goals in life, but I think it's important for us to understand that the first and most important thing, you need to focus on God. Because if you focus on God, you know, He will help you as well. Uh, to focus yourself in the, all the other important things in your life. Because God is interested in you, is interested in your children, your family, your wife, in your husband, in your colleague, in your care- colleagues, in your career, uh, whatever important things is there in your life. God is very interested in these things. He wants you to su- succeed because He has good plans for your life, you know, because we are His children as well as we sang this morning. So if we learn to focus ourselves on God, then all the other things will, you know, he will, you know, point at us, uh, to point as what is important as well to focus our life. And, and, um, and when we, you know, when we look, we speak about refocusing, you know, there are different aspects of refocusing our life um, uh, on God. Uh, but I think one important aspect is that in order for us to uh, keep a pace with what God wants to do in our life, sometimes it's about leaving certain things behind and embracing what God wants to do new in our life. Because God is a God that He likes to renew things. He likes to change things, to transform things. And, 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 and if we are not ready to, uh, to give up to maybe some of our habits, some of our um, elements that are there, part of our comfort zone, we really we, we will not manage to keep a pace with God because, you know, so, you know, God is about renewing, starting things afresh. And when we focus ourselves on God, if we want really this year to be a year in which we as Christians, we follow, we focus on God, we need to learn that, you know, we need to leave some things behind because God wants to, uh, to change things. And, and, and if you go in the Bible, you, we see plenty of examples. You know, even our Lord Jesus Christ, he was a revolutionary man. You know, he came in, into the picture of the world and he said, I'm going to change everything here. So he came, he started to speak to the people of Israel that for centuries they were used uh, to leave their relationship with God based on, on um, a system that was, you know, full of, you know, sacrifices and rules and regulations and here and there, you know, and Jesus said, suddenly say, look, you know, we, it's me here now, and I'm going to change everything, there is grace, there is church, you know, so he brought a massive revolution, a massive change, you know, into, uh, into what was the uh, worship of God at that time, and, and some of the people understood, you know, he is the Messiah, he wants to change things, I'm ready uh, to follow him, and they become uh, his disciples, they become the, then the people who formed uh, the, the church, other people didn't understand that, they were used to um, what their life had been for you know for the past centuries, their habits, their uh, cultural things that were kind of keeping them. Um you know, in that place, and they were not ready to understand what Jesus was doing, and they missed out in one of the, you know, uh, most important uh, um, moments of of history. And then we we look at, you know, the the history of the early church, same thing. Uh, There was this uh, bit of a conflict between the, the, among the, in the church, you know, among Christians, but those who were Jewish, you know, coming from a Jewish background, and those who were Gentiles, they were like, discussing the church. Some of them at one point wanted to reintroduce some of the rules and regulations, but said, no, you know, your Paul had to oppose that very strongly. God is doing something new. Jesus is doing something new. You know, we need to, you know, is, there is no any more time for all these things. So again, you see reflected in the early church, a God that was changing. He was shifting things. He was uh, changing the, the rule of the game in a sense. And again, there were people who understood what he was doing and they allowed God to um, transform and to change or renew their lives, other people didn't, and they lost their focus on what God was doing at that time. And, and that's why it's important, you know, for us. When we say, God, I want to be focused on you, it's important for us to, you know, to be ready to change, to allow God to change our life, to renew our life, because perhaps He wants to bring us in a place that we have never imagined before. And unless you are you're ready to embrace what God wants to do in your life, then otherwise you'll miss of, of what he wants to do with you. And, uh, you know, um, I want to read something in the Bible, because when you, especially when we look at the, um, at the early church and what God was doing, 
you know, God put the right people into place in order to fulfill, you know, the plan that he had for the church. And one of these people was, was Saul, that then became the Apostle Paul, yeah? Uh, so Saul was, um, uh, you know, we know him now because for the Apostle Paul, yeah? We, know, we remember him for the good things. Uh, he wrote a lot of the Bible. He contributed a lot in, the, in writing the New Testament. Uh, perhaps after Luke is the one that uh, contributed the most. Um, and, um, but he was not always like that. There was a time you know, in his life, and if, you're, you know, if you've been around church or, uh, for a while, probably you know his story, where he was a man that was actually persecuting the church. He, uh, he had to go to a major shift. You know, uh, in his life, in order to uh, be transformed from a persecutor to an apostle, and this uh, shift happened when he uh, had an encounter with Christ in the in the way uh, to Damascus. He was going to Damascus because he he heard of some Christian. He wanted to to catch them and, and you know put them in prison. Uh, but you know, God had a, had a plan for his life. He said, "You know what? I'm going to have an encounter with you. I'm going to I'm going to show you." what I want to do with your life. And I want, I want to read from there. So he had this encounter with Christ, and the encounter with Christ was so powerful that we know the story. He became blind. He couldn't see anymore. Uh, so he had to be carried into uh, Damascus by his companion um, because he couldn't walk any longer, because he couldn't see. So I'm going to read from there, Acts 9, chapter 9, verses 10 to 19. Uh, this is the moment where uh, you know, he was um, going to Damascus. He had lost his sight. And, um, and God was already preparing a man there, Ananias, was a, 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 a godly man um, who was there to explain, to meet Paul and to, and to um, uh, and just to, to talk to him and to have, have this, you know, to help him to move these first steps within the church. So here, uh, so here in, uh, the, the, there in Damascus, referring, was a follower of Jesus in Damascus named Ananias. Uh, in a vision, the Lord said to him, Ananias, Ananias answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, called Straight Street. Find the house of Judas and ask for a man named Saul from the city of Tarsus. He is there now praying. He has seen a vision in which a man named Ananias came and laid his hands on him so that he could see again. But Ananias answered, Lord, many people have told me about this man. They told me about the, uh, the many bad things he did to your holy people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to Damascus. The leading priests have given him the power to arrest all the people who trust in you. But the Lord Jesus said to Ananias, Go, I have chosen Saul for an important work. I, I want him to tell other nations, their rulers and the people of Israel about me. I will show him all that he must suffer for me. So Ananias left and went to the house of Judas. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Saul, my brother, the Lord Jesus sent me. He is the one you saw on the road when you came here. He sent me so that you can see again and also be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something that looked like a, like a fish scales fell off Saul's eyes. He was able to see then he got up and he was, and was baptized. After he ate, he began to feel strong again. So this is the story, the encounter of this um, uh, uh, man, Ananias, with, with, with Paul, Saul, or the Apostle Paul. And, and there are two things I want to, um, uh, just to say very quickly. Think first about Ananias. He was a man who was ready to change, you know, and to shift his thinking. God said, you know, go to Saul. Oh, you're sending me to Saul, the Saul that goes around, you know, it goes, you know kills all the Christians, arrests them. You're sending him, me to him because you want to heal him, because you want to do something in your life. God, are you sure? For sure you're doing something wrong here, right? Did he, did he, did he say that? No. He said, there was a bit of confusion, but said, okay. You know, I don't know what you're going to do here, but, you know, if you tell me, I'm going. So there is a man already that was ready to shift his mind. He was ready to be renewed. He was ready, to, was ready to be transformed, to leave something that he knew very well because he knew Saul for his fame, to be a killer and a uh, someone who was persecuting the church. And he, he moved immediately in a place where, okay, God, you are telling me to do something that I don't understand, but because I trust you, I'm going to go for it. A man who was ready to change Ananias. And then also when he met him, he's like, dear brother, 
It's like, well, what approach? I would have probably gone there and say, first check. Maybe does he have any, not gun, he didn't have gun, but does he have any sword? Any, is he trying to trick me? Maybe I would have looked from the window first to see what he was doing. Is he really blind? You know, I, w- I would have probably been very cautious and, hello, you know. But he went there and said, brother, I'm here for you. He just moved on what God had sent him to do. He shifted like that. He's like, yes, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, be, uh, to embrace what new you are doing in my life. And then it was Saul, this man who was, in, in, the Bible says, who was chosen for an important work. And uh, this is a, a, a very interesting thing because, you know, uh, as I said, you know, Paul became, you know, the apostle to the Gentiles mainly. Yeah? He was speaking as well to the Jewish people by his mission, like also we read in Galatians, was like to reach out to the Gentiles. And now this is, was, again, it shows that uh, Paul was a man that he was ready to change things in his life. Because you see, Paul was reaching out to the Gentiles, but he himself was a Jew. Uh, he was not just a Jew, but he was a very known Jew. He knew the law very well. The Bible speaks that he grew up at the feet of Gamaliel, who was the, the top teacher of Jewish law at that time. Yeah, so he, to know, to, for him to go and reach out to the Gentiles was not, you know, something easy. You know, maybe, you know, if you, if you think about God, God calling a Gentile to reach out to the Gentile, that's easier. But he was actually a Hebrew man, a Pharisee. Who got saved and he was immediately he was ready to leave behind all these structural um, you know complex that probably he had in his mind of laws and you know we cannot mix with them they are unclean and all these things to say yes you know God you've got something for me I am you know you've chosen me for an important work I'm ready to go for it so Saul was, Paul was another person who was ready to embrace what God was doing new at that time in history so Paul, because he had an, Saul, he had an encounter with Christ, he became a new vessel, a new uh, container that was ready to receive what God was doing new in his life. You see, we need, in order to receive what God wants to do new, we need, uh, we need first to create space in our life. You know, we need to create an empty, an empty space that is ready to receive what God wants to do. And, and that's exactly what Saul, he, when he got saved, he became this new vessel that was ready to contain what God was about to do at that point in history. And you see, he was ready to change, to be transformed. Because when you think about God, God is not about replacing people. He's not in the business of replacing things. God is in the business of transforming. God is in the business of changing. God is in the business of, you are this, I'm going to transform you. And you're going to become this. He's not going to dispose of you. And that's why, for example, in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test, to, uh, to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasant, and perfect will. So believe it or not, you sitting down in this room, students, but as well member of Center Church, you have been chosen by God for an important work. And, 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 and how, how can that be? Like you may think now, what do you mean? I mean, chosen for an important work. What, what, that, what is that work? Whatever you are right now. That's the important work that God has given for you. Sometimes we, we think as Christians that the important work is to go and speak here, and to go and speak there, to go as a missionary there, to do, you know, to do miracles and signs. You know, these are the important things. But actually for God, is wherever you are, He has something important for you to do there. Everything is important in, the, in God's kingdom. There is not a, something that is more important than the other. All things are important. Sometimes even when I speak to a person, your word can, can change the life of a person. So God wants to do something important, but you need to be ready to be transformed and to be changed, to be uh, tuned up with God, to understand what God wants to do with your life. And this is interesting what we read in um, in Romans, because it says, I, I urge you, brothers and sisters, you know, to offer your bodies as a, as a living sacrifice. So there is this concept of, 
if I offer my body as a living sacrifice, then I actually, uh, I'm open to be transformed and renewed. Because these, these things, verses 1 and 2, are put together. So how is that possible? You know, it's like, you know, it's an interesting connection that we can think about there. Because you see, to be renewed and transformed is not something that, you know, yes, God does in your life, but you need to be willing to do that. It's something that is under your control. And that's why, you know, Paul was saying, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So he didn't say, that Paul doesn't say, the Lord will transform you. The Lord will do this. He said, be transformed. He said, be, it means like, okay, there is something here that if I understand, I actually I can be transformed. I can allow God to change my life. And, and what we need to understand is to live our life as a living sacrifice. It simply means like you, Lord, you, God, are Lord over my life. You know, so if you want to change something around me, I'm ready to welcome it. If you want to shift something around me, I'm ready to do that. And you, know, and you will be ready to, to sacrifice your habits, to, uh, to leave behind the things that you know, maybe are not good for you or things that you know, it's time for you to let go, you know, only... You know, when you're ready to live your life as a sacrifice, because you're saying, I'm sacrificing myself. I'm leaving these things behind. And I, I want to be ready to be transformed by you, to be renewed by you. So to be transformed and to be renewed by God is something that we can do intentionally. You know, the, our journey of faith with God is full of intentional moment, where God is looking, okay, what do you want to do? The Bible, you know, is, is, there are so many promises. Say, if you do this, you will be blessed. If you listen to me, you will be. You know, these conditional promises, you know, intentional things. So otherwise, we'll be like fatalist. Like, oh, whatever, God, my life is here. You're working in me. Whatever comes. That's not what Christian life is all about. Christian life is like, I'm going to show you where you've got to go. And you've got to make a decision. Intentional moments. Look, these things are not good for you. Leave it behind. It's your decision to do it or not to do it. You know, it's full of moments where God will ask you to collaborate with him, like to use your, your, your mind to actually say, yes, I want to take that decision. I want to sacrifice this in order to, be, to, em to embrace what, uh, what you want to do new. And I want to uh, say something to the students. It's like, um, look at this year ahead of you, like a year that God wants to transform your life. It's not about just gaining knowledge, but it's about God transforming your life, changing your life. You know, when I came in England um, I, I, and to study at the college, I, I remember well, at that time, now it's a bit different, you know, my, my church was a bit conservative, so they said, oh, you go in England, you will see a lot of things, you know, they were like a bit of whoop whoop, <laughs> like be careful, was like, oh, I'm not going anywhere, I'm going to Bible college, you know. Um, so my, my idea was just going to go there, learn something more about God. I love God. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, see what God does for me. Uh, and I remember while I was waiting at the airport for my train to come, I've done a bit of, uh, which uh, I don't advise anybody to do, a bit of Bible lottery. You know, when you open your Bible, yeah, God, speak to me. Zah! Take a verse out of context. And, and uh, uh, so it's like, uh, and the, 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 the verse that I opened, of course, completely out of context and, and everything, it was 2 Timothy 3, 1, 14. It says, But as for, as for you, continue in what you have learned and have, and have become convinced of, because you know those uh, from, from whom you learn it. And I was like, yes, Lord, that's you telling me that. I, 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 it's not about new things, you know. I'm convinced. Just you know, I want to learn something, but, you know, I need to, to stay put, to stay there where I am, you know. And I was like, yeah. Thank you for speaking to me, God. And I was so, you know, puffed up. And um, uh, little did I know that actually the greatest work that God has done in my life at the, I, while I was studying at the IBTI is the transformation that he brought me through. Because you see, unless your life is transformed by God, then you will, you will miss on what he wants to do. God, you know, the society is moving. God is... He intends to do things, you know, within the, a world that is ever changing. And, and he wants to move you some time and, or to repurpose your life in different things. And unless you are ready to keep a pace, unless you are like Ananias or Saul, like, yes, you know, I'm ready to be transformed. You know, it doesn't make sense, but I'm going to go for it. Unless you are in that place, you will miss a lot of what God wants to do in your life. 
So be ready to let go, to sacrifice, you know, um, you know things that you, you may think are dear to you. Sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm convinced. I'm, I'm sure, really. <coughs> Learning is about questioning a lot, you know. And he's, uh, you know, Paul himself, he was saying, was it? Um, he said, be like a Berean, you know, that you don't just listen. They go and check in scriptures what I say to them. So it's like, uh, it's good to question. It's good to, uh, to go deeper in the word of God. So it's like we need to be, uh, you know, God wants to renew your life. You know, it's, although we live in a world that has a culture of like a disposable culture, uh, we like to dispose of things because everything has become so cheap to produce, right? So we, um, we are used to dispose of, of, of everything. And unfortunately, this disposable uh, culture sometimes reflects also in, in, in the people. So it's not anymore about objects that we dispose of, but very quickly we dispose of people. And you see a lot of marriages and are ending up and you know, par- um, husband and wife disposing of each other. Sometimes you see parents disposing of the children. Um, literally, you know, you know um, some, someone that we met where we are now, um, he, he's, he's not in the church, was a, you know, a young man who we were trying to witness to. And, and he had a child and, and, and he said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him go. You know? And he gave him to social services because he said, you know, um, basically, you know, I live on my own, I want to live my life. He's like, oh, you're giving up your child. They were not taking away the child from him. He actually willing, he said, look, take him because I cannot bear with that. It's like, it's like I couldn't understand that. He's your, he's your son there you're speaking about. How can you just dispose of him so quickly? And, and, and this is, you know, sometimes we, we bring this into our Christian faith and we think that if we fail in something, God wants to dispose of us. God wants to, I'm going to replace you. You know what? I'm going to replace you. But God is not about replacing. God is about transforming and changing. And praise God for that. He transformed the mind of you know, Ananias. He was ready to embrace what God was, wanted to do. Um, knew he transformed the mind of, of, of Saul and Paul. And then so many other things in the Bible. People were completely uh, turned around by, by God. And as well, Jesus himself. This is the last scriptures I want to read for today. Am I still in time? You know, am I? Am I over it? Yeah, just the last scripture, then I close, okay? Uh, so Jesus, chapter 2, uh, in Mark chapter 2, verses 18 to 21. I'm just going to read verse 21, okay? Um, so we're going to be quicker. So it's verse 21 and 22. It says, No one uh, sews a, a, sew a patch of unstrung cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, from the old, making the tear the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the, and the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skin uh, wine skins. And and I want to just you know uh, to close here. And I want to say to the students, you know, you're looking. Uh, this year ahead, God, I want to be that new wine skin. I want to receive some fresh wine. I want to receive whatever new you want to do in my life. And to do that would require sacrifice. Mm-hmm. To leave behind maybe some of your convictions, your things that maybe you give for granted or that you think that's just the way they are. Just, you know, I'm not saying to dispose of everything because we're not about disposing, but just, you know, to be fresh in your mind. Say, Lord, I'm ready to receive whatever you want to do in my, in my life. But as well for all of us here, if you feel like your faith has hit in a bit a shallow spot, it's like, oh, you know, you're not excited anymore about God. And you remember the days when you were in love and in fire for the Lord and you're wondering where is this, where is all of this has gone? Perhaps it's because it's time for you to create some new room in your life, to create some new wine skins that you, so that you can welcome you know whatever God wants to do new in your life and as well for you like for the students everything passes from sacrifices Paul says live your life as a living sacrifice be transformed be renewed these things are linked together we need to sacrifice in order to experience something new in God thank you for listening to this week's message for any more information or to find out more of what we do as a church you can contact us at info at centrechurch.uk or check out our website at www.centrechurch.uk.